comes on a course that he has always felt comfortable. He won the two, 2013 US Am at the Country Club at Brookline and then wins the US Open on the same course. Only Jack Nicholas uh, had ever done that in history. And so I am delighted. And again, he did play at Northwestern University, which is of particular significance to me. Matthew Fitzpatrick, good enough to be here with this spectacular trophy. I, I would imagine you spent your whole life dreaming what a moment like that would be like. How have these last 48 hours compared to what you dreamt they would be? Um, 10 million times better, yeah. Um, you know, you always think about what it feels like to win a major, uh, what it feels like to win any golf tournament, but obviously the majors just mean that much more. And um, yeah, it just, it's, it still doesn't feel real. And um, you, when, it, when it happened, it was, yeah, it's just the feelings out of this world. I've make, I talk about it all the time. It's my favorite sport, and I'm fascinated by the ability to handle the pressure. And so I saw a story that said on the 14th hole, you said to your caddy, Billy Foster, I hate this. It's horrible, <laughs> uh, meaning all the pressure that was out there. And, and, and so I wonder, how did you, because you had some ups and downs in that final round. Anyone who watched it knows what I'm talking about, a few putts that you missed, and you gave up the lead at one point. How did that pressure feel? How would you describe what that feels like being sort of locked into that all day on the final round of a major championship. Yeah, it's just, it's so intense. Um, it's not just from final day, it's the night before when you're sleeping with a lead and um, it's just it's just a lot. Uh, um, um, yeah, you know, there's times when you, there's no doubt about it, you hate it, but at the same time, uh, when it pays off, it, it just feels that, that much sweeter and um, yeah, it's such an incredible feeling. I ask the players this all the time when I get the chance to talk to them. When you're standing over a shot like that, when you're standing over a putt that you know will go a long way towards deciding something this important, when you're standing over that shot in the 18th uh, fairway bunker, what thoughts are actually going through your mind? How do you put out of your mind what is at stake and just stay in the moment? I'll be honest, I, I wasn't looking forward to that fairway bunker shot. Uh, it, it's something I struggled with all year. And um, I think it was just kind of pure natural ability that took over. Uh, we, ha we had a line in mind and, and I, I would say that uh, it ended up coming out much cleaner. Well, it was a clean strike and it came out with much more shape on it than uh, I anticipated. Um, and to hit it to, you know, 15 feet was, uh, was incredible. Sitting at home watching my entire Northwestern family screaming at the television, you have 100 yards to the right of that bunker and somehow you hit it the one place you couldn't hit it and it doesn't wind up costing you the tournament. Okay, so I another funny story. Your brother, who we all saw go running out and then lift you up off the ground. What exactly happened here? He left on Saturday and then came back on Sunday. How did this go? Yeah, he... Um, he he came for the week to kind of just spend time with my mum and dad and, uh, and myself. And um, he left, yeah, he left Saturday afternoon before I teed off. Uh, and he said he landed and I was tied for the lead. So he texted my manager, Ted, and uh, he said, oh, I need you to book me on a, the first flight back. So uh, he, he got up uh, ridiculously early, got on a flight and uh, came back to, uh, to see it all. So your brother, who we all saw getting all emotional and all that, basically felt you had no chance to win the U.S. <laughs> Open and left. Is that what I'm understanding here? Uh, maybe not that. Maybe not that. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> when, when he landed and saw that I was, you know, tied for the lead, I think he was like, what a mistake I've made. <laughs> Does this change your life? I mean, do, do you already feel the ways people talk about how becoming a major champion, particularly this trophy here in this country, that it changes your life? Do you feel this is going to change your life and change you? Um, I think it'll change my life, yeah. I think it's, uh, for me, that the big thing is is about, you know, legacy and, and going down in, in golf history. And um, what I achieved on Sunday was, it's it's what I, what I dreamt of, what I've worked for. Um, but... You know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have friends and family around me that uh, keep me very, very grounded. Um, and, and I don't think they'll let me change. So, um, yeah, hopefully not. All right, one thing I have to ask you about today, and I'm, I don't know if you've had a chance to hear the news as you're running around doing this, but the latest uh, star from the PGA Tour who is going to be going to this new Live Golf Tour, and I'm not sure how closely f fans are following all of this, but it's something that is really sort of splitting apart the world of golf to a very large degree. As Brooks Kepka, you're a U.S. Open champion. He's a two-time U.S. Open champion. I do wonder your perspective, not just on him, but on so many of these star players now, no, most notably Dustin Johnson, Phil Mickelson, and how you think this impacts the world of golf. Yeah, it's interesting. There's certainly a split at the minute. Um, you know, I, I just I constantly go back to the, the two sort of quotes I've seen from Tiger and uh, Rory over the last few weeks about legacy and, and history and achieving 
uh, and winning tournaments. And, and for me, that's the route that I want to go down. Um, for me, that's the best place to play is the, the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour and, and the majors. Um, that's what I want to do. I, you know, I want to win more of these and uh, more times on, on DP World Tour and, and the PGA Tour. So um, it's certainly an interesting story and uh, I'm sure it's uh, it, well it's already ruffled plenty of feathers and um, yeah we'll, we'll see what happens. I'd like to do one more thing stick if I can. Can we run the Grayson Murray video? I just I want to end it on a fun note here. Uh, most of us who play golf can identify with uh, this moment that Grayson Murray had while we were playing or while while uh, during the uh, weekend when he was struggling a little bit. Uh, take us through this emotion here. What, <laughs> what, yeah. what is that we're seeing there? I have to admit we, we were watching this in the morning before my round and uh, they panned to him when he when he sort of helicoptered the putter and uh, yeah we did we did have a laugh. Sorry, Grayson, but uh, it was uh, it was it, it was pretty amusing. <laughs> is, that, is that an emotion that you can relate to? Oh, definitely. I, I did that last year, and uh, I'll be honest. After I did it, I felt awful. <laughs> oh, really? Sometimes when I do it, I feel a lot yeah, better. To be completely well, honest, yeah. it's a nice release. <laughs> hey, congratulations! Thank We're you. all so proud Thanks, of you from Northwestern. You. That's Matthew Fitzpatrick, U.S. Open champion. Delighted to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations and continued success. Uh, back to the. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.